Hi guys, Samantha from Jessie with Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to use up the leftovers from the watercolour sheet that we used in a previous video. So here is that sheet and you can see all of the little circles that were cut out and I had to cut out a few more circles just to um, use get it to this point so that's these over here and I'll show you what to do with these in a minute I've just layered them down like fish scales and we're going to flatten those in a minute so I'll just get those out of the way and what you want to do with this sheet now is you want to take it and you just want to gently break it up into strips like that so you've got all bits like this. Try and keep them as long as you can. And so you'll just go down this entire sheet. And I'll show you that in just a second if I can get you there. There. You'll just go down the entire sheet and break off each of these little lines. And try and keep them as long as you can and then I'll show you what to do with these. So if you've kept the one, I've kept all of the ones from the four as well. So I'll just bring over all of those and split this up and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so finish that up. Now bring these strips over and you'll just lay one down. And you'll bring another one and you'll place that on top. Don't worry about closing up all of the gaps. We can take care of that later. And take another strip and place that on top of the other strip and continue until you've used up all of your pieces and it doesn't this is no by no means accurate or you don't have to worry about um, keeping your lines straight or anything just kind of pile it on top of each other you can really be quite messy with this and it'll look quite nice kind of ends up looking like paint drips and I'll bring over a project that I've done using this technique I've actually got two projects that I've done using this technique so I'll continue patching this up until I've finished up all of my pieces okay so now we want to roll it flat and you want to roll this way towards the drips you don't be rolling down here stretching the drips we want to roll this way against the grain and that will create the best mica shift well not mica shift um the watercolor effect okay and i'm just busy pressing down here to get any gaps there that are there closed up and now i can just roll in both directions in general and if you see any gaps you can just Gently press those in, and pressing these sides to tidy it up a bit. It looks really nice. There we are. And then I'll just roll to flatten this out and make it all nice and even. There we are. Okay, now I'm going to pop this through my plaster machine on the thickest setting. Like that. I'm going to take it down one more setting. Roll it through, because I just want it to be nice and even. I'm going to take it down one more setting. And roll through. And there we are. So you can see that depending what it is, you're going to get an uneven effect. But it really is quite a nice um, technique. And you can see on the back side that it looks really cool as well. You'll get another effect back there. So you can choose which side you like the best. I'm not sure which side I actually like the best. I like both of them. Okay, so that's the one. Now I'll bring over these little fish scales. Which is another thing that you can just do with the rounds. And you want to press again against the grain. And I'll just use my fingers to do this so that I have a little bit more control 
over water mirroring. There we are. And let me just do the same over here. Just press those together so that it's all one sheet and then I'll be able to flatten them out. Okay. And then I'll roll against the grain at first and then once I've got that done I can roll in all directions. And that's another little uh, watercolour. It's kind of called cool fish scales effect. Okay, so that's the large scales. Let's try small scales. Those are just two watercolors and um, this is another way that you could use up the little bits of watercolor that you have in case uh, you had any so you could create some cool fish scale effects and then with the bits that are like the little real drags of the bit of the watercolor you could create this cool paint drip effect so those are two watercolor techniques that I thought you guys would enjoy having a look at so I do hope that this tutorial was helpful to you and if it was please do let me know and I'm just going to bring over uh, two projects that I did using this watercolour. So the first ones are these ones which are my previous project and I haven't uh, finished these up just yet um, as I'm recording this tutorial midway between creating this project but anyway I just wanted to show you um, the, this area over here so this is basically the paint drip effect and the nice thing about it is you don't need to make a sheet necessarily you could just use it like I did over here and basically what happened here is that I was busy joining a seam between these sheets so it's a great way to um, join up seams if you have any and another thing is if you wanted to use them like this so this is a lariat, lariat that I made a while back using my previous oyster watercolour and so this is what I did with the leftovers this is the oyster watercolour itself and then this is the paint bits that were left over from it so I thought that I'd show you guys what that looked like because that's quite interesting. And so that's basically what I have done using this um, technique. So I do hope that was helpful to you. Please do like and comment and share as that is always very helpful to me. I love hearing your thoughts on the matter. Um, and please do check out my Patreon account as I have other projects on there that I post every single month. I post a total of three separate projects, two projects every month and a tip tutorial, colour recipes, early access to these YouTube tutorials and all sorts of things so please do check that out as that is always helpful to me and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.